Hey everybody, this video is to show you how to replace the washer bottle or washer reservoir on a 2012 E63 AMG. Our car is actually the wagon variant of it, uh, but this procedure is relatively similar across a bunch of different Mercedes mod models, so hopefully this will help you out. What I'm gonna do is I will show you the part and a little bit of interesting things about it, and then we'll actually walk you through step-by-step how to get the washer bottle out there. I will tell you, uh, I thought, how hard could it be? And it's actually one of the more complicated jobs uh, <laughs> that I've found in terms of something this simple as three bolts and the thing should come out. All right, so here we are on the driver's side of the car. Um, the, the problem actually stemmed from right underneath the, uh, kind of just in front of the, the driver or left side wheel, uh, I, I'm here in the US, um, I saw blue liquid just coming out and pulling out and it actually just pulled all the way down the garage. And I thought, oh my goodness, is it coolant? As it turns out, it's really common for these washer, washer bottles to separate. Uh, here's the part. I will give you a word of caution, um, a couple of things. It makes, number one, make sure you get the right part number. These are different, either A, between the sedan and the wagon, B, between the AMG cars. So you'll see that, and C, if you have front headlight washers. So if you have a car with Xenons, it'll even be a third variant of this. So some of them don't have holes here for the secondary pump. That's, I believe, specific to the wagons. Um, all of them have this. Some of them, the AMG cars actually run, I think the power steering coolant lines run into the tank. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but just be sure you get it right. And the other thing that you'll want to do is make sure that you buy there's a gasket that goes in each one of these holes, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the right gasket uh, for, the, for the right holes, um, just because they're known to leak, and so while you're taking stuff out and putting new stuff in, you'll, you'll wanna do it. Um, how, this, how this thing mounts is actually relatively simple. Uh, there's a mount that goes in the car, and I'll show you that one that actually hooks onto this. There's a screw here and a screw here and that's it, or a, a bolt, I guess I should say. So it's relatively simple in terms of how it mounts, but getting to them is a gigantic pain in the neck and then wiggling it out of the way. Um, so the, generally the procedure is we're going to jack the car up, put it on jack stands, and then we're going to take this inner wheel liner out. Um, it's a relatively simple job, but can be kind of funky. Uh, and then we can actually start getting at the washer, washer bolts and screws and stuff. So here we go. So if you've never jacked up your car before, or if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I prefer to jack it up from the front. I have a really long jack from Harbor Freight, which allows me to hit this front jack point that's underneath the car. Um, if you don't have that, you'll basically just jack up one of the sides so that you can get a jack under the front and then jack that up. And then you're, you'll be able to easily place the jack stands underneath the front wheels. All right, so the next step now that we have the car up in the air, up safely on jack stands, is to remove the wheel. I'm definitely going to cheat and use my electronic impact. I even cheated even more and loosened these before the video so that it wouldn't take as long and be as loud. By the way, you're never supposed to use an impact wrench on your uh, wheel key or wheel lock if you have them. Uh, I always do it anyway. So just advice, you know, uh, follow it if you want to do the right thing. Don't do what I do. And the wheels should just come right off. Nice and easy. All right, now that we have the wheel off, our next step is actually going to be able be to take the front half of the wheel liner. You can actually see, if you look up to the top, it splits right here. So really the washer bottle is right behind this vent here. Um, should be super easy to get to. It's kind of a pain to get out. I've now done it a few times because I kept ordering the wrong part. Uh, see my comments earlier on making sure you get the right one. Um, so this comes out relatively simple. There is a 10 millimeter let me get the light on it. 10 millimeter nut there. That's directly behind back. And then one that's directly up just by the shock. And then you have three pop rivets. One, two, and three pop rivets that come out. Um, and then this whole piece will basically just peel back. And I'll try to get it on camera, but I'm sure I'll do a terrible, terrible job of it. Now, if you've never seen a pop rivet before, uh, you'll see that not all of mine are totally complete. Um, but what happens is there is a piece in the middle that pops out, and then you're able to pry out the out piece and it basically frees everything up. Um, 
I will tell you, these prop rivets are about the toughest of any car that I've ever worked with. They make all sorts of tools to do this. I usually like to just kind of pry it up with a screwdriver, which as you can see, I've, as I mentioned, I've done it a few times, which now tears it up. And then you can get like a pair of needle nose on it and just pull that center piece out. And then once that's out, it's super, super simple to just kind of grab a hold. Um, you can buy these for super cheap. You can kind of see how the mechanism works. That, that centerpiece slides in there. You can buy them for super cheap. Uh, I've never had a problem with reusing them, but if you break a couple, they're, they're not bad to have on spare. If you're buying parts from Mercedes or something anyway, uh, might be worth just picking up a few new ones so you don't have to worry about it. And so we're going to do that for the first one. We're going to do that for the second one. And again, let me grab my screwdriver here and just pry out the little, little middle piece a little bit. And sometimes you'll get lucky and they'll all come in one piece, other times not. Um, but I can then just grab my pliers and grab them. And then number three, again, you can tell this one's already missing its, its centerpiece. So that will just pry right back out of there. Now for number four, like I said, 10 millimeter socket works just great on this. You can use a wrench if you want to. They're plastic nuts. So another thing to note is when you put these back on, um, there's really no need to tighten them all that, all that much. That one will come up. And then there's the one above. Which I'll try to get here. Um, again, 10, mil 10 millimeter nut not on there super tight so I can even just lightly lightly loosen this and let all of this dirt fall all over my camera um, <laughs> and then that will come off nice and easy as well now you've done all of them right we have our nut off there we have our nut off there we have these two and you think great I'm gonna start pulling this pulling this all apart now it totally makes sense but alas we have to bend down underneath the car and there is a little just pop out thing here and you just pry this out with a screwdriver and then two eight millimeter bolts one here and one here because this piece actually wraps around the bottom of the car so i'll show you that in just a second all right so once we're down underneath the car you can actually see uh the, the piece here that we're going to pry out now i'm just going to pry this off with a little screwdriver to get enough that i can get my hand on it and then just give it a wiggle you can see it's a little bit of a pain, but it just comes comes out um, and looks a little bit like that. And then last but certainly not least, we have our two 8 millimeter sockets. And they come out just like normal sockets. Um, these I find are a little bit more difficult to do without the wrench attached. So uh, a little wider pitch, get it most of the way out, you grab it by hand. more and it pops right out all right so you can see here these two bolts are out and we're gonna now start be, we're gonna now be able to peel the whole thing back and what we're going to do is if we go you can see this is the top bolt that we let out I'm gonna pull down on this piece to basically just free this top section you can see I have to pull it out of the wheel well a little bit. And I just pull it down to get it out of the way. And then we'll start working my way along and just slowly but surely pulling this out. I'll try to get a camera angle on this, but I'm sure you won't be able to see it. But this basically just comes down into the lip there. And you can just bend it out and start, and start releasing everything. All right, so now we're going to start doing that now that we've gotten it free. And I'm just going to pull up and out. You can see that it will just start pulling out. And I just work my way all the way along the edge. And then the bottom rotates out. Again, we undid those things, and it pulls right out. Now, we have freed ourselves access to the washer bottle. And I will tell you, like I said, this is one of the most complicated washer bottles that I have ever seen. We have one pump here, a second pump over here, and then the sensor that comes in on the back side. So we're going to have to be sure that we unhook all of these things. Um, 
if you haven't drained it already, and by drained it I mean if all the water hasn't leaked out of the side of this already, um, I actually went and drained mine. If you need to drain it so it'll stop leaking in your garage, you can actually undo, and let me get the light where you can see it, you can undo this little clip here that's on here, and we'll, I'll show you this in a second, and pull this off and it'll actually drain all of the fluid out, probably to the point where it's no longer leaking. Um, so that's, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but basically we're going to undo this pump, we're gonna pull this to the side, and then be able to undo this clip here. We're gonna undo this clip. Uh, you can leave all the wiring attached. I basically just tossed the pumps and stuff up here onto this piece or someplace out of the way. Um, and we'll be able to see if I, get the light to work again I always choose to do these videos uh, you know at the worst possible times but here's the the pump that's to the left hand side and here's one of the screws that comes in there's another one that we'll get to that comes in from you know it's back up over here someplace um, and then there's the one that's up on the neck so we'll be able to get to all three of those relatively easily and start to get this thing out all right, so step one is gonna to be to remove this pump and clip. Um, the clip is really easy. They just slide it right out. Uh, keep in mind that the two clips are different sizes, so it's important to remember which one goes to which. And then this hose comes right off. Um, I will mention that if this is full of water, it's going to start dumping water out at some point. So uh, you're gonna to wanna to be sure to catch that uh, as you move forward. And then change the camera a bit and we're able to get to this clip here which again operates much the same way it's just a little retaining clip on the outside that then pops off um, you can actually just store these on the clip and I'll, I'll actually just pull this hose out and route it someplace out of the way because uh, again we're gonna be pulling this this whole unit out um, if we can so I'll just kind of route these hoses up out of my way um, and then what we can do is we can pull up on the pump to get it removed and again just toss it you can see I'm just tossing stuff up here there's a little bar that runs across uh, and I'm tossing stuff out of the way to that again to do this hose oh there's one more clip on the back side of this so we pull that out you can actually see hey we lost a little bit of fluid there um, so I guess I had a little bit left. Uh, one important thing to note as well, and I'll probably cover this when I'm putting it back together, but these clips only go on one way, and it's on the square end. There's, if you look at this, there's one side that's kind of squared off. That's the side that the clip goes back on. So just neat to know little things that I figured out by doing this way too many times. Again, I'll toss my pump up here. Um, I've read that people say you should replace these pumps at the same time. Definitely do the grommets because we don't want to mess with that. Um, I'm not too bothered by the pumps. All right, now that we've dripped water all over the floor, I'm going to climb down on the floor, you can see, and I'm looking at the front of the washer bottle here, and if I go up in here, you'll actually be able to see that there's the sensor that's in the front of this bottle, and you can worry about unclipping it. I find it just pries right out of the grommet, and I lost my light there. I'll show you what it looks like now that it's pried out. Um, it just pries right out and then that frees it up and that's all you need to get to from the front of the bottle. So I wouldn't worry about pulling extra panels off or un unhooking the clip or anything like that. It's time to get the bolts out and I'll tell you they're a bit of a pain to get to. The first one that we're going to get because I think it's the most challenging is actually you can see it at the base facing the rear of the car um, from the front. You can see this guy, and it's kind of right there at the tip of where I'm pointing, facing that way. Um, I find a really stubby socket, and uh, I think it's 10 mil, we'll, we'll start getting that guy out. You can actually see it's super awkward to get a wrench in here, um, but I'm able to do it and just go little by little, and of course it falls off a bunch. So I won't show you this painstaking process, um, but I am able to just slowly but surely work this out. Now, after way too long of trying, I ended up getting it out with my fingers um, just by reaching in there once I got it a little bit loose. The next one's a little bit easier. It's this guy here, uh, and we're just going to undo that. And what that's going to do is that's actually going to release the brace that holds the top part in. Um, it actually hooks on to that other piece. 
So what I'll do is I'll un undo it. It's another bolt that looks just like that. And then you'll actually be able to see the water bottle is free to move forwards and backwards. Actually, I probably should have undone that one first. And then what we can do is we just reach in and I just prise on and off like this. You can kind of see how it would hook on there. So I just pried it off and then that guy's free. And we have our top two bolts that are free and clear. And because I'm feeling very wise today, I saved the easiest bolt for last. And it's this one here, which basically just comes right out. Nice and easy. And hypothetically, this thing is free, but what we'll find is that I'm gonna have to wrestle this tank out of here and getting it to come in and go out is just a ginormous pain. Um, but I'm just gonna start to wiggle it and pull it down. And what you'll see is when you start to do this, there's the cap that has some transmission cooler lines on it or something along that line. And I'll just pull, 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 kind of wiggle, pull, try to get it in the right angle. Um, and the trick is you have to get these lines out before the tank will actually drop down out of the car. And it's a little bit funky of an angle to get to it. Um, but now we are home free and we have a washer bottle that is completely out of your car. All right, now we're gonna just insert the new grommets into everything. What I like to do is I actually just keep a bottle of, this is uh, dish soap and water mixed together. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spray a little bit of this on here, which is just gonna help everything to go in more easily. And it dries out and it's totally fine. I don't think it's gonna contaminate or anything or anything like that. And so we're gonna just push this in to get that nice and sealed. And we'll do the same thing with the other grommets. And this big guy that goes right there. Let's see if I can get a decent camera angle. Again, I'm gonna put a little bit of soapy water on it. Um, you can press these in without the soapy water. I just happen to have it handy for like turbo intake pipes and stuff like that. Um, silicone and things, and it's a trick of the trade that helps everything kind of slide right in versus having to worry about it. Um, you do want to make sure these are flush. Uh, this is another area where this stuff can just leak like crazy. Um, so just be careful while you're doing it and be sure to, you know, get everything done. Then last but not least, we have our other pump hole, which is this guy, if you can see it. Um, and again, all I'm going to do, take a little bit of soapy water and press it into the hole and be good to go. Um, other thing to note is the bottle doesn't come with a new cap. You'll just have to swap that over from your other one once you're done. I totally forgot this part and show it later in the video, but be sure to swap over the metal clips for the bolts to bolt it back into the car. There's two of them. There's one on the bottom bolt and one on the one that was really hard to get to. I'll show you later how to do it, but just don't forget to swap them over because it's much easier to do All right, this next part it. is unfortunately super fiddly, so just bear with me as I do this. What you're going to do is you're going to start slotting in the top of the hose back through all of this intake piping or not intake piping, uh, I think it's coolant lines, or I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it comes right up through there. The key thing is, is if you get it too far up, then you won't be able to get this tube, this metal tube in. So I like to bring it down and just try to figure out the right angles and stuff to get all of this to go together. Um, luckily you have a little bit of flexible tubing up towards the top which allows this stuff to kind of work a little better. I suppose these are probably sensitive and I shouldn't be manhandling them like this, but realistically, hopefully it'll all be stout enough to, to handle my aggression. Um, just get it in there. And once you get it in there, then things go relatively smoothly. Again, all of these pipes are gonna end up routing up towards the front. Go up like that. Eventually, you can tell the, where the cap goes back on. We'll come back and actually seal that later. But what we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to hold it back in place. And I'm going to actually put all of the bolts in first before we start trying to reroute hoses and pumps and all sorts of things like that. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to grab do the top one and once again I forgot to slide this little bugger back on so we're gonna do that real quick um, it's gonna, it would be way easier to do this off the car but luckily I can see it um, the nubby end looks a little bit like a nub goes towards the rear of the vehicle all right, so we're going to come back up to the front, and this one was a bear to get started. I actually cut it out of the video because it took me about 15 minutes just to get that one bolt started. Once you get it started, I found that I can actually get my little tiny wrench on it and get it tightened up. Um, I don't know. Maybe go have a beer before you do this. Get your patience ready. Uh, maybe somebody with smaller hands, I, I have giant hands, um, could, could find this a little easier. But realistically, we're just going to snug this guy up. Nice and tight. Well, I feel pretty, pretty good about that as it sits. So we'll pull that back out. Our next step is pretty easy. We have, if you remember, this guy. Um... We're just going to kind of position this down where it goes. Again, lining up with this hole that we have up here. If I can get it. There we go. And all we're going to do is just snap this on. Nice and easy. You'll see that the hole lined up perfectly to start. Um, at least for me, right here. And so I can just put my with a little bit of pull up just to give it the pressure that it needs and get that guy started and tighten it right up. Nice and snug. And then nothing's moving around really in good shape. I'm going to go back down and tighten up this guy, which I left loose earlier, um, right here. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure we go back and tighten this guy up nice and snug. And then slowly but surely, we just have to route all of the tubes and wires back where they go. Um, it's a little bit funky, but for example, this guy goes back in behind here. It eventually clips in to place right on the tank there. Um, what I'm going to do is take my, take my pump and my two pieces and you can actually already le already have the little clip inserted back on the end like I did and then what happens is it just clips into place like that and it's super easy and super awesome same thing with this guy which I'll do you can hear it clip um, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight up and down with the pumps like this and then we're going to go down into that spot where we had put the grommet before. We're going to rotate it into place. And then we just snap our hose in here. And that keeps everything kind of out of the way. Again, like it's supposed to be. Um, and then we will pull our hoses down. And this guy ends up going somewhere down and around like this. Um, Let's just get our pump back out. And this pump, very similarly, will go straight up and down. It's got to go into the slot, straight down, and then turns into position. I'm going to take my clip and on the boxy side of it, I'm going to clip it into place. 
This is going to just clip. Maybe I'll do it like this first. And you can just feel that click into place. Really, everything's in good shape. This wire goes back into place there. These can go around the edge. We're really done with the front. What we can't forget about is we can't forget about the sensor on the back, which is going to be awkward for me to show you once again. So we're back at the front of the car again. Again, the sensor has this little nubbin on the end of it. That goes into a hole here, so really this can only go in one way. Um, and so we're just going to wiggle our sensor into our grommet here. Um, if it's not going very easily, then you can add some soapy water, which I don't think will hurt the sensor, but I'm going to try to do it without it. And again, this will just push into place until it goes in. Um, I'm going to have to move the camera out of the way to get the angle to get it, but basically you just push on it and wiggle it until it goes into place. This little nub piece goes into the other hole. All right, and now I will show you this video of it. Now that it's in, you can see that it's totally flush up against there. Uh, no problem at all. Now, last but not least, the most gratifying part, putting your lid back on. This just slides back off, just like you pulled it off the other one, and goes right on there like that. And we're going to go back down just real quick and make sure that this plastic lid is tight at the top. Keep, it, keep anything from slashing, slashing onto it. Seems like it's pretty snapped on there, so I think we're in good shape. All right, next step is actually to fill our windshield washer fluid reservoir. Um, you can see that I'm actually using windshield washer fluid, and the reason for that is because one of the main reasons for these things cracking is people putting water in them, them freezing, and then, you know, the, the water expands and then it causes a crack. So I'm gonna pour about half of this bottle in, and then I'm gonna go down and check for leaks. So let's do that now. All right, now that we've filled with fluid, we're gonna go ahead and check for leaks. I'm looking for leaks around any of the grommet, grommets that I put in here. Um, and everything's looking relatively good. Again, before it was leaking from over on the side. Um, and I'm not seeing any fluid leak out, so it'll be really interesting to watch this over the next day or so. But I'm gonna go ahead and button everything back up and call it done. All right, now that everything's back in, everything's not leaking, we're gonna go ahead and put our fender liner back in. This is gonna go in much like it came out. I'm just going to slide it in, rotate it in the bottom to fit in over this. Um, and then it basically just snaps into place on the inside of the liner. Then we're gonna go back underneath. We're gonna pull this back down. I might have to pull that loose just to get it out. Run it down far enough, then go underneath. And we're all set. All right, this is the pop rivet that we talked about earlier. Uh, this center piece just comes, comes back out. Basically, you put the outer piece back in, you push, then you push your center piece back in, and you're good to go. So we're going to do the other two pop rivets here and here. We're going to put our plastic nuts back on. We're going to push, put our bolts in back underneath the front. We're going to put the wheel back on, take it off the jack stands, and be good to go with a job well done.